General Education Diploma English Language Core Listening 2015 to 2016 Semester 2, First Session While I'm reading your instructions, the teacher will check from the back of the class to make sure that everybody can hear. The teacher will not stop the CD. You will hear each text three times. The first time, only listen. The second time, complete the task. And the third time, check your work. The examination will start now. Question 1. Look at question 1 on your exam paper. You're going to hear a young man called Badr talking to his mother about his son Ahmed. But first you have 30 seconds to study the task. Now listen for the first time. Hello. Hi, Mum. How are you? Good, good. How's Amal? And how's little Ahmed? Oh, they're both fine. But uh, Ahmed gave me a real shock just now. That's why I'm calling. Why? What happened? Don't worry. Everything's okay. Uh, I was just watching TV when I got a phone call from our neighbour. She told me that Ahmed was out on the first floor balcony, all by himself. What? So I ran upstairs and reached him before anything could happen. But how did he get out there? He opened the glass door. We didn't think he was tall enough to reach the handle, or strong enough to open it. Well, he's two now. Nearly two and a half, in fact. Anyway, we'll certainly lock that door from now on. But what about the other doors in the house? Especially the front door. He might get out and run onto the road. It's OK. We always keep the front door locked. I'm glad to hear it. But now he's getting taller, there are other things to watch out for. Especially in the kitchen. He might reach up and... Don't worry, Mum. We never let him go into the kitchen when we're cooking. Good. But you have to be careful in the living room too. There's hot tea, hot coffee. By the way, you know what to do if something happens and he does get a burn, don't you? Uh, I'm not sure. Put ice cubes on it? Or is it toothpaste? No! Just put the burn under cold running water for about five minutes. Right, got that. Now, what about electricity? Does he ever go near the wall sockets? Or try to plug in the charger on your mobile phone? No, nothing like that. But he does like playing with the TV remote. Oh, that's OK. He won't get a shock from that. You know, all this reminds me of when you were his age. Once you nearly poisoned yourself. Did I? Yes. Don't you remember? You thought my perfume bottles contained some kind of juice. And you were about to have a drink. Fortunately, I saw you just in time. Thank you for that. And thanks for all the advice, Mum. I feel better now. It's such a responsibility. Maybe we should send him to a nursery school. Hmm, possibly. You'd better talk with Amal about that. Anyway, if you ever want to talk or ask any questions, just call me. Sure, I'll do that. Thanks again. Now listen again and complete the task. Hello. Hi, Mum. How are you? Good, good. How's Amal? And how's little Ahmed? Oh, they're both fine. But uh, Ahmed gave me a real shock just now. That's why I'm calling. Why? What happened? Don't worry. Everything's OK. Uh, I was just watching TV when I got a phone call from our neighbour. 
She told me that Ahmed was out on the first floor balcony, all by himself. What? So I ran upstairs and reached him before anything could happen. But how did he get out there? He opened the glass door. We didn't think he was tall enough to reach the handle, or strong enough to open it. Well, he's two now. Nearly two and a half, in fact. Anyway, we'll certainly lock that door from now on. But what about the other doors in the house? Especially the front door. He might get out and run onto the road. It's okay. We always keep the front door locked. I'm glad to hear it. But now he's getting taller, there are other things to watch out for, especially in the kitchen. He might reach up and... Don't worry, Mum. We never let him go into the kitchen when we're cooking. Good. But you have to be careful in the living room too. There's hot tea, hot coffee. By the way, you know what to do if something happens and he does get a burn, don't you? Uh, I'm not sure. Put ice cubes on it? Or is it toothpaste? No! Just put the burn under cold running water for about five minutes. Right, got that. Now, what about electricity? Does he ever go near the wall sockets? Or try to plug in the charger on your mobile phone? No, nothing like that. But he does like playing with the TV remote. Oh, that's okay. He won't get a shock from that. You know, all this reminds me of when you were his age. Once you nearly poisoned yourself. Did I? Yes. Don't you remember? You thought my perfume bottles contained some kind of juice. And you were about to have a drink. Fortunately, I saw you just in time. <laughs> Thank you for that. And thanks for all the advice, Mum. I feel better now. It's such a responsibility. Maybe we should send him to a nursery school. Hmm, possibly. You'd better talk with Amal about that. Anyway, if you ever want to talk or ask any questions, just call me. Sure, I'll do that. Thanks again. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Hello. Hi, Mum. How are you? Good, good. How's Amal? And how's little Ahmed? Oh, they're both fine. But Sir uh, Ahmed gave me a real shock just now. That's why I'm calling. Why? What happened? Don't worry. Everything's OK. Uh, I was just watching TV when I got a phone call from our neighbour. She told me that Ahmed was out on the first floor balcony, all by himself. What? So I ran upstairs and reached him before anything could happen. But how did he get out there? He opened the glass door. We didn't think he was tall enough to reach the handle, or strong enough to open it. Well, he's two now. Nearly two and a half, in fact. Anyway, we'll certainly lock that door from now on. But what about the other doors in the house? Especially the front door? He might get out and run onto the road. It's OK. We always keep the front door locked. I'm glad to hear it. But now he's getting taller, there are other things to watch out for, especially in the kitchen. He might reach up and... Don't worry, Mum. We never let him go into the kitchen when we're cooking. Good. But you have to be careful in the living room too. There's hot tea, hot coffee. By the way, you know what to do if something happens and he does get a burn, don't you? Uh, I'm not sure. Put ice cubes on it? Or is it toothpaste? No! Just put the burn under cold running water for about five minutes. Right, got that. Now, what about electricity? Does he ever go near the wall sockets? Or try to plug in the charger on your mobile phone? No, nothing like that. But he does like playing with the TV remote. Oh, that's OK. He won't get a shock from that. You know, all this reminds me of when you were his age. Once you nearly poisoned yourself. Did I? Yes. Don't you remember? You thought my perfume bottles contained some kind of juice. And you were about to have a drink. Fortunately, I saw you just in time. <laughs> Thank you for that. And thanks for all the advice, Mum. I feel better now. 
It's such a responsibility. Maybe we should send him to a nursery school. Hmm, possibly. You'd better talk with Amal about that. Anyway, if you ever want to talk or ask any questions, just call me. Sure, I'll do that. Thanks again. That is the end of question one. Now go on to question two. Look at question two on your exam paper. You're going to hear a radio program about a model citizen from Indonesia. The text will be in two parts, each with a different task. But first you have 30 seconds to study the two tasks. Now listen to part one. Good morning, listeners, and welcome to another edition of A Helping Hand. Today, we focus on a successful businessman who has also done a lot to help poor people in Indonesia. His name is Tahir Panestu, and he was born in the capital city, Jakarta, in 1952. His parents were originally Chinese, but came to live in Indonesia after the Second World War. They believed strongly in education, and were delighted when their only son got a place at the Jakarta College of Medicine. Unfortunately, after his father became seriously ill, Tahir could no longer continue his studies. Later, however, he had the opportunity to do a course in business studies in Singapore. After graduating in 1976, he immediately returned to Indonesia and went into business himself, importing fruit from Japan and Taiwan. Then, in the early 1980s, he started work as an agent selling Japanese cars. With the money he earned from these activities, he was able to set up a new company called Maya Pada. This company built two hospitals in Jakarta, a hotel on the island of Bali and a chain of duty-free shops throughout Indonesia. However, in recent years, Tahir's main interest has been in banking. In 2006, he set up his own private bank in Jakarta and has since then opened over 200 branches throughout the country. Now listen again and complete the task. Good morning listeners and welcome to another edition of A Helping Hand. Today we focus on a successful businessman who has also done a lot to help poor people in Indonesia. His name is Tahir Panestu, and he was born in the capital city, Jakarta, in 1952. His parents were originally Chinese, but came to live in Indonesia after the Second World War. They believed strongly in education, and were delighted when their only son got a place at the Jakarta College of Medicine. Unfortunately, after his father became seriously ill, Tahir could no longer continue his studies. Later, however, he had the opportunity to do a course in business studies in Singapore. After graduating in 1976, he immediately returned to Indonesia and went into business himself, importing fruit from Japan and Taiwan. Then, in the early 1980s, he started work as an agent selling Japanese cars. With the money he earned from these activities, he was able to set up a new company called Maya Pada. 
This company built two hospitals in Jakarta, a hotel on the island of Bali, and a chain of duty-free shops throughout Indonesia. However, in recent years, Tahir's main interest has been in banking. In 2006, he set up his own private bank in Jakarta and has since then opened over 200 branches throughout the country. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Good morning, listeners, and welcome to another edition of A Helping Hand. Today, we focus on a successful businessman who has also done a lot to help poor people in Indonesia. His name is Tahir Panestu, and he was born in the capital city, Jakarta, in 1952. His parents were originally Chinese, but came to live in Indonesia after the Second World War. They believed strongly in education and were delighted when their only son got a place at the Jakarta College of Medicine. Unfortunately, after his father became seriously ill, Tahir could no longer continue his studies. Later, however, he had the opportunity to do a course in business studies in Singapore. After graduating in 1976, he immediately returned to Indonesia and went into business himself, importing fruit from Japan and Taiwan. Then, in the early 1980s, he started work as an agent selling Japanese cars. With the money he earned from these activities, he was able to set up a new company called Mayapada. This company built two hospitals in Jakarta, a hotel on the island of Bali and a chain of duty-free shops throughout Indonesia. However, in recent years, Tahir's main interest has been in banking. In 2006, he set up his own private bank in Jakarta and has since then opened over 200 branches throughout the country. Now listen to part two. All this time, Tahir has been spending his money, not on himself, but on helping others. Following his father's example, his main target has been to improve education. He has made many donations to universities both in Indonesia and abroad. This money has mostly been used to provide scholarships for poor students. He also supports the use of modern technology in education. Every year he donates 10,000 laptops to poor students in Indonesia who have achieved high marks in their exams. However, Tahir is not only interested in education. Another important issue for him is health care. For example, he has arranged for his two hospitals to provide free treatment for cancer patients below the age of 10. They now also carry out free heart surgery for poor people. In addition, he has worked with scientists in Singapore and donated huge sums of money to be used for medical research. Tahir's efforts to help poor people have been honoured all over Southeast Asia. Between 2000 and 2010, he received awards from the governments of China, Malaysia and Singapore. Unfortunately, his own country has been rather slow to recognise his work. But finally, in March this year, he was presented with a special medal by the President of Indonesia. Now listen again and complete the task. All this time, Tahir has been spending his money, not on himself, but on helping others. Following his father's example, his main target has been to improve education. He has made many donations to universities both in Indonesia and abroad. This money has mostly been used to provide scholarships for poor students. He also supports the use of modern technology in education. Every year he donates 10,000 laptops to poor students in Indonesia 
who have achieved high marks in their exams. However, Tahir is not only interested in education. Another important issue for him is health care. For example, he has arranged for his two hospitals to provide free treatment for cancer patients below the age of 10. They now also carry out free heart surgery for poor people. In addition, he has worked with scientists in Singapore and donated huge sums of money to be used for medical research. Tahir's efforts to help poor people have been honoured all over Southeast Asia. Between 2000 and 2010, he received awards from the governments of China, Malaysia and Singapore. Unfortunately, his own country has been rather slow to recognise his work. But finally, in March this year, he was presented with a special medal by the President of Indonesia. Now listen for the last time and check your work. All this time, Tahir has been spending his money, not on himself, but on helping others. Following his father's example, his main target has been to improve education. He has made many donations to universities both in Indonesia and abroad. This money has mostly been used to provide scholarships for poor students. He also supports the use of modern technology in education. Every year he donates 10,000 laptops to poor students in Indonesia who have achieved high marks in their exams. However, Tahir is not only interested in education. Another important issue for him is health care. For example, he has arranged for his two hospitals to provide free treatment for cancer patients below the age of 10. They now also carry out free heart surgery for poor people. In addition, he has worked with scientists in Singapore and donated huge sums of money to be used for medical research. Tahir's efforts to help poor people have been honoured all over Southeast Asia. Between 2000 and 2010, he received awards from the governments of China, Malaysia and Singapore. Unfortunately, his own country has been rather slow to recognise his work. But finally, in March this year, he was presented with a special medal by the President of Indonesia. Thank you. That is the end of the listening examination. Now go on to the next question.